So viewers hope everyone is fine. I'm pretty good too. Today we will talk about a manageable switch of TP-Link. Its model number TLS G2424. 24 port is a manageable switch with 4 SFP ports. First you will see such an interface after entering the control panel where the switches are shown at the top and after that you can look down a little and see that various information of system information is shown here. In the first part of the system information, you will see a word called system description and there you will see 24 managed switches. Its main information is shown here. After that there is device name which you can customize later after that there is device location where you can name the location where you will set up then there is system contact in this case you can give your mobile number or any website address after that you can see here after this you can see the hardware version here showing the model number of your hardware after that you can see the firmware version and from there you can know your firmware serial number or firmware version and then there is the IP address option to know the IP address with which this device is assigned Next it will show system time and runtime with subnet mask, default gateway and MAC address for detailed information about IP address. Next we will go directly to the system IP because to set up this device we need to configure the system IP directly. Now we will move to system IP tab to install system IP on this device. Here you can see the interface MAC address is showing first. Then you have three types of installation or IP setup options here. First we can see static IP, then dynamic option, then boot B option. And then management VLAN if you have VLAN setup or your connection require VLAN. Then you have to set up VLAN here. Then you give your connectivity IP here then subnet marks. And then set up the connection and click apply. But if you choose dynamic connection here, you don't have to do anything here. You just click on the dynamic connection checkbox and apply. And the third option is not used here. So I am keeping this off here. In that case, I have tried to show you a demo here how to set up a static IP here, what will be your IP address and what will be the subnet max and what will be the default gateway. After that, we will move to the device description where you can first see that the device name is written. You can change the device name if you want. And in that case, when you connect this device to a server, you can see that your device name is on that server. And secondly, here you can define the location of the device. And in that case, you can identify the device of this location. Next is system contact. This is basically if you have a network administrator assigned to you. In this case, you can use the phone number of the network administering company or the assigned person so that someone else can contact them when they troubleshoot it. If you look at the next option, then the name of that option is system time. It means this system time set up for that time. So in that case, you can set up it in two ways. One is manual and the other is the internet connection you have or seeing Tijathian with PC's clock. So you have it is convenient that you set your time here. Daylight saving time, DST, is a practice in which clocks are set forward one hour during warmer months to increase evening daylight. Many electronic devices, including routers, have settings for changing DST. If I look at the next settings, we can see it says user manager. So if you are under a network or if you are managing the network, in that case your alternative is someone else who is responsible for this network instead of you. One or more people may need to give access to this router. In that case, each person may need to create a different password. So those accounts or accesses should be created from now on. Inside the user manager, we can see another option which is called user config. From here, the first option we see is username. That means the user you will create here first you have to give the username. Then what type of user will you create? It has to be selected from here. After that, you can see the user status, which means this user will be enabled or disabled. You can edit or select it from here. Then create a password for the newly created user through which the new created user accounts can be accessed. In addition to this, Old users can be edited or deleted from now on. The next option is System Tools and the first of the System Tools is Configuration Restore. In this case, if you have any configuration backup, you can restore that backup here through this option. And the next option we can see is Configuration Backup. If your system needs to be cloned to multiple machines for some reason, you can use this option to clone or keep a backup for security reasons. In the next option, we can see Firmware Update. This option is basically for all types of devices. Through this option, you can update your device if there is a new software update or operating update or if there is any kind of problem in your system. Then you can update it. Downloading the firmware and uploading it here solves many problems in many cases. In the next option, 
we can see a system reboot. In this case, it is necessary to report a remote device or you can reboot your device through the website or web UI using this option. The next option we see here is system reset. This option is used when reconfiguring your device completely or when you want to use it on a different network. This device can be completely factory reset through this option when configuration is required. The next option is called access security. Now we go inside access security. Here we see at the top it says access control and then next it says access control security and this is where it starts. These settings are very detailed and a very big thing to explain in this video. So this video will be very big. I am trying to finish the video. We can see here it says control nodes and disable enable and then give IP address, give mask, then give MAC address and after that you have to select the port for which code you will use them and then system config. If we go to the system configuration here then you can see that here is given the session time out how much it will work and next is given the access user number in this case the user that you have created how will the user be enabled or not what will be the admin number and whether the guest number will be added the all these matters can be set up from here. The next option is name switching. This option is very important for this router and is a special option so it has to be configured very important here. Each port can be controlled separately. When we enter inside the switching, we can see many options open here such as port. There are several settings like traffic monitor, MAC address. From here you can change each port individually from speed to disable enable and flow control and status. And some of its other settings include port mirror, port security, port isolation. Let's take a look at those settings and take a look at the basic information. When we go inside port mirror, we can see there is an option called group list of mirror where you have to create group, select the type of mirror, select the mode, select the mirror port which will be mirrored with which and with which all the ports that have been created must be selected. We can see the details from here by editing them from here. This next option is port security here. Actually, we can see here Ethernet ports are being selected and from there I can configure Max learned Mac. Learn number is showing here this option to select learn mode and from here it is possible to disable enable from here through status. The next option is called port isolation which works exactly like the previous option and needs to be configured in the same way. Here each port number is shown and they have to be configured separately. From here you can do port forwarding as required. The next option is LAG. First of all, you will see an option about the LAG table from there you can see global config and some configuration tables shown here and here in one more option you will see a tab related to static LAG. There you go LG config you will see a related option and a little further down you will see some options called description and member port. From here you have to configure LAG properly. In that case, you can first see that I have opened a tab called traffic summary and they chose the auto refresh and then what the refresh rate will be and then in the traffic summary you can see that each port is showing the bandwidth usage through statistics and text. I think it would have been much better if it was shown graphically as we see these things very well graphically inside the Mikrotik router. If we go inside the next option there is an option called traffic statistics and there we can see a similar interface and that the statistics are providing different types of information in text form such as broadcast, multicast, unicast, you can see these types of information. The next option is very important for this type of switching or router device in that case it is called MAC address here we can see first after entering there is a tab called address table and next there is static address followed by dynamic address and then there is filtering address. Looking at the next option, we can see the name of the option is Villain. Going inside the Villain, we can see it is divided into two sub-menus, first Villain configuration and then port configuration. Inside the port configuration tab, you can configure each port individually for user Ethernet Villain port configuration setup. If we open the next option, we get three or four more sub-menus, where we can first see that inside the STP configuration, we can see many options like STP summary in the FTP conflict sub-menu and later on global configuration, parameters config. There are many more things that are not possible to discuss in detail here. After that, we can see an option named port config. Through it, we can do all the port configuration tasks very easily. The next option is MSTP instance. Inside it, we can see three more sub-options, region configuration, instance configuration and instance port configuration. The next option is STP security where there are important settings like port protection. Here each port is required separately. It has to be set like this. Next we can see there is an option named multicast. 
Entering multicast, we can see that there are about four sub menus such as snooping config, port config, villain config, multicast config. All these options cannot be detailed here, but in a future video, we will try to give different videos on them. What is multicast VLAN, how it works, and many more things will be discussed, so please stay with us by subscribing to our channel. Through the option called Packet Statistics, you can see the packet statistics of each Ethernet numerically from now on. Now there is no way to see it in a graph form. The next option is called QoS. Bandwidth can be controlled very nicely through this option. It is possible to configure each port and villain. There are four more sub-menus inside it. Port Priority, DSCP Priority, Cost Mapping, Schedule Mode. Bandit Control includes several other options that allow you to control the bandages better. Next option is SNMP Configuration. Through this option, it is possible to store the information of all the users communicating through this TP-Link switch in a server. In that case, some important options are kept from here so that this type of service can be taken from this switch. On the top, we can see five sub-menu and stages. Here it is seen that there is another option called Notification and next we see an option called Ramon. It is not possible to give details about these options at the moment. We will try to discuss them in a later video. In the next option, we can see a tab called Maintenance from where we can do system monitoring in this case. We can see that there is a graphical interface through which we can do system monitoring like current utilization, max utilization and average utilization. Next option we are looking at is log here. You can see that through this option some log information is displayed like block table, local log, remote log and backup log. Looking at the next option we can see there is an option device diagnosable, play and from there we can see cable test load backup and several other essential tools. Next, we can see a very important one like network diagnostics through which we can know the ping and trace route through it. At the very end is service confect where I didn't find anything very useful and then at the very end is logout through which we can log out of this system. Hope we have been able to give you a basic idea about this device through this video so stay tuned by subscribing to our channel.